Hey, what's up, everyone, and welcome to Ask Dr. Jeff, the interactive Zoom experience where we discuss all things photobiomodulation and life wave technology. I am your host and facilitator, Dr. Jeff Hubbard. I'm a medical doctor here in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. As always, it is my honor, pleasure, privilege to share space and to discuss this amazing technology. Look forward to a rousing discussion today. As you know, we've just altered a few things in 2024. It's weird to say that we're four months in already. It's kind of crazy. Things have flown by. But anyway, if you are tuning in for the first time, we take each week and we dedicate it to a specific aspect of better understanding our body, better understanding how to utilize life wave technology to have a more appropriate experience with your health and wellness. So today, because it is the third week of the month, we are going to be discussing anatomy and acupuncture locations. Uh, guys, LifeWave is a biotech company. It has been in existence for 20 years, right? Really a significant amount of time, specifically in the direct sales arena industry. And so um, great opportunity to implement these biotechnologies that they produce. They produce a suite of wearable devices, wearable technologies in the form of patches, all right? And these patches utilize a science called photobiomodulation. So a little bit of a mouthful, but it is simply light therapy. I'm sure you've heard of infrared beds, saunas, uh, light bulbs, uh, lasers, etc. This is another therapy, another form of infrared light therapy, specifically near infrared light, all right? So each one of these patches, so grab my trusty prop here, each one of these patches, you can see there in the center, there's a fiber mesh. That fiber mesh is covered with a proprietary blend of organic materials that make a nanocrystal. So it's a liquid nanocrystal. It covers that patch and they are designed specifically to reflect certain frequencies of light back into the skin from that specific near infrared light spectrum all right so we one episode we actually covered the near infrared light spectrum and how it cannot be seen with the human eye all right there are several light types that cannot be seen with the human eye as a matter of fact our visual field is very, very narrow in comparison to the full scope of light that there is for us uh, to see, right? But we see a very limited amount. So there's a lot of light out there that's happening around us that we cannot necessarily visualize, but it is particularly beneficial for our body, for our physiology. It adjusts our biochem. It helps us to produce certain molecules that have been deemed by medical science to be really valuable and to help the body to function in its most optimal way, right? So that is specifically how these patches work. This particular one that I just showed you is called the X39. It is my best friend, guys. I wear this patch almost daily um, to help stimulate a molecule called GHK copper peptide and to increase its production inside my vessel. And so we have found that around the world, when people consistently wear this particular technology, it helps to improve the endogenous production of these different molecules, specifically GHK copper peptide in reference to the X39. This GHK copper peptide is capable of really awesome gene expression, right? So if this is your first time hearing about this, this may be a little challenging to fully grasp, but our genes inside our DNA are responsible for producing certain proteins. And each one of these proteins then folds and changes into a particular biochemical structure that allows for it to function within this system we call biology and life. And <clears throat> this GHK copper peptide molecule is really powerful. Guys, it's been studied since the early 1970s, primarily by a gentleman who we just lost. He just transitioned to the other side, Dr. Lauren Picard. 
And so Dr. Picard's research is groundbreaking in how this particular molecule is capable of doing so many different things within the genome and helping our body to be younger, more vibrant, and to ensure that we are producing the a proper amount of proteins that are responsible for helping us to ensure things are working effectively inside the cell. So our cell function goes up. And guys, you know, it's one of those things where when cell function is great, tissue function improves, organ function improves, organ systems improve. And next thing you know, you're feeling better, stronger, and more vibrant. So common things that happen with the X39 you see an increase in energy level. You see a reduction in inflammation and consequently a, a reduction in pain or discomfort or challenges with uh, your musculoskeletal system. You sleep great. You have an improved mood. Your cognitive function and memory ability and, and processing is really great. Also, um, just really helpful for your overall organ function. And so we know that helping our organs to function more appropriately is a really valuable way to achieve uh, optimal health and wellness. So this patch is dynamic, guys, to say the least. And all of the patches that uh, are produced by LifeWave are very powerful in their own unique ways and have synergy and capability to work with each other to help us achieve all sorts of things. And so that's why we come together once a week here on Ask Dr. Jeff to uh, converse about how to utilize certain patches and combinations of patches to help us be uh, at our ideal state or to deal with some particular concern or ailment or something that's going on with the body that we'd like to improve, all right? So as I mentioned before, we're gonna cover anatomy and uh, acupuncture today because that's an awesome way to understand how to begin utilizing the patches. If you don't understand the anatomy, if you don't understand what's happening with the body, if you don't understand these really awesome acupuncture locations and meridians around the body, then you could mis misuse is not the right word. You could uh, leverage those technologies a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to pull out my prop today. And I have talked to you about this a little bit before, but I think it's great to revisit certain things that may be a little challenging for some to fully digest, right? So this uh, tool here is actually the lower lumbar. So this is L3, L4, and L5. So this is your lumbar spine. As you know, if we had a longer prop, this would show all of the other vertebrae, but your lumbar vertebrae are five in number. So these are the, the most common ones that get injured, okay? And then here we have the back end of your pelvis, which we call the ilium, okay? We have the ischium, which is the outer portion of the hips, and the ilium is here. It's also known as the sacral region, okay? So the most important takeaway is that these lumbar are capable of bending in all different directions, okay? So within, uh, within the space between those are the shock absorber disc. So if you've ever heard of degenerative disc syndrome, it means that these discs are not as thick and voluminous as we would like them to be and they're not acting as a shock absorber. Really, that's why they're there. They are, are responsible for keeping these bones from touching each other because we know that when they touch each other, that creates friction, that creates inflammation, that creates problems. So um, the, the beautiful design of our vehicle that we drive around Earth gives us these cushions that help us to prevent those challenges, all right? So if you look at the side here, that or maybe looking at the back, that's most important, right? Because we have these spinous processes. This is what you actually feel when you're touching on your vertebrae. But the most important part are these nerve roots that come out of each respective section of spinal column, all right? So if there's ever a compression or a 
uh, inflammation in what we call these foramina, these small holes that are designed to allow the root to travel outside of the spinal cord, outside of the spinal column, and into the peripheral tissue and to receive sensory function and to engage motor function, these nerve roots can be impinged or they can be um, just get pissed off, right? They can get inflamed, they can get uncomfortable. We call that a radiculopathy, right? And these radiculopathies can be extremely challenging. They can lead to all sorts of challenges, pain, discomfort, uh, issues with balance, issues with walking, issues with stretching and range of motion and being able to get up and down from seated positions and so on and so forth. So these three vertebrae are the most common ones that are damaged, usually from car accidents or falls. Falls doesn't even necessarily mean that you have to hit the ground. It could be that you stepped off of a step improperly or you got out of the car improperly and just that jolt to your system has created a shift, a change in way one of these vertebrae work, all right? And so um, that could be very traumatic to your system, all right? Because one of these nerves now is pinched. You have a bulging disc or a herniated disc or some aspect of this disc is changed or you may have some small micro fractures of these bony pieces that you can see here, right? Because you have the spinous process here, but you also have transverse processes on either side and they can get um, broken down or have uh, small fragments of bone that, that break off. And again, they mess with those nerves and that could be what really is challenging. And also you can see these small holes on either side of the ischium, this are uh, these are called sacral foramina, right? So they're S1, S2, S3, S4, and so on. Okay, so this is another area where if you've got uh, a trauma from a fall or trauma from a car accident or just wear and tear over the years, you can also see some challenges. There's no nerve roots shown here, but you can see where the nerve roots come out, all right? They come out of these little small holes. So this is a great way to sort of visualize the anatomy of the low back, okay? So also common right here between the L4 and the L5 junction, this is where we access uh, the cerebral spinal fluid. So if ladies have ever gotten the epidural, here is where you introduce the needle. Um, if you've ever had fluid drain, maybe they thought you had some sort of infection of the nervous system. Maybe they thought you had meningitis or something like that. They'll access between here to get a sample of cerebrospinal fluid so that they can send it to the pathology lab to make sure that you do not have any bacteria, fungal, or virus going on inside your spinal column. All right. So, um, but this L4, L5 junction, for whatever reason, it is very, very fragile, all right? So you can damage this very easily. As I mentioned before, it can be a fall, it can be a slip, it can be an um, uh, accident at the gym, it could be something working out, um, it could just be picking up your grandkids. Uh, there could be something that's challenged here at this particular location. So most people have some sort of disc issue or radiculopathy or just pathology developing here. And that can send pain down either butt cheek and down into the leg, or it can, depending upon the severity of the illness, it can even cause some other things as well. So very commonly we hear about these issues. I hear about these issues here on Ask Dr. Jeff, as well as just answering questions and responding to things that I hear from the community. So um, th this particular patching protocol that we're going to talk about to help this situation is really valuable, right? Because if you know someone who's suffering from this types of issues or injuries, et cetera, uh, giving them relief could be uh, life altering for them because there is a lot of pain and discomfort associated with this. And 
uh, you don't really know how bad you need a back until it starts hurting. <laughs> so um, there's definitely a lot of collective benefits from beginning to understand how to appropriately address this sort of condition. All right. So you can imagine if you're looking at someone from behind, you have to visualize this inside of their system. But again, this particular juncture right here, L4, L5, is located when you put your hands directly on top of your hips, okay? If you put your hands on your hips and you start to work your thumbs around to the back, of, um, around to your back, around to the, the, the spinal column, you'll find that L4, L5 junction, okay? And what you can do to begin to impact pain and discomfort in that area, in my opinion, guys, you should have a short-term approach and you should have a long-term approach. Obviously, the short-term approach is all about reducing inflammation, it's helping with pain and discomfort, giving that in, excuse me, giving that individual a improved quality of life. Okay. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, they need to have flexibility and range of motion. They need to be able to walk around. They need to be able to sit for longer periods of time without having uh, those nerves start yelling at them, okay? So what you can do on the short term is use our triangle method, right? In acupuncture, there is this phenomenon about triangular positioning of the points that you're going to influence. So we're not going to talk specifically about points. We're just going to create this triangle, all right? So again, we're looking at the person's back, all right? So you're going to be viewing them this way. They're going to be facing you, and you're going to be looking at their back like this, all right? So in that instance, this is going to be the left side of the body, right? And this is going to be the right side of the body, all right? So on either side of that L4, L5, you're going to put a tan patch on this left side, right? And you're going to put a white patch on this right side, all right? So it should be at the level of where the radiculopathy is currently giving the person a problem. So if it's L4, L5, it would be here. If it's L3, L4, it should be here. If it is L5, S1, and we're getting into these sacral nerves, that also could be problematic as well. And you can really determine what's happening by getting an MRI. Most people who have had an injury to the low back have x-rays, have MRIs, have pathological studies and things that can help to explain where the actual problem is. So if they can't point to a particular location where it's painful, then you may have to use some of the literature that their doctor has given them to understand exactly where everything is located. But again, Left side, tan ice wave. Right side is going to be our white ice wave, okay? Tan on left, white on right, all right? So you're looking at it here, right? But you're going to be patching based upon the person's left and right, not your left and right, the person's left and right, okay? So again, tan on the left, white on the right because I'm looking at this actual device, right? Which this is facing forward, this is facing backwards, all right? So tan on the left, white on the right. Then we're gonna come down below the level where the damage is, all right? And we're going to apply a stacked glutathione and eon, okay? So this should be, you know, you can, Come down to the coccyx bone. You can see it better, visualize it better here, but you know this is our tailbone. You can come that far down or you can just come a little bit up from there, right? Like basically at the top of your buttocks where your buttocks begin to form. That's a good place to apply that glutathione and eon, okay? And again, you're making this triangular position, right? So it is a... a basically an equilateral triangle facing down, okay? So this is a very good starting place. You can apply these patches, even if you're not certain that this is the right orientation, you can peel one side off and put it there and let it begin to work its magic. And 
uh, just get a gauge from where the person is. It's always a good idea to ask the person to give you a pain reading, right? From one to 10, what is your pain? Some people say, oh my God, it's a nine. Okay, if that pain has not been reduced to somewhere around a two or a three, they're not in the right position, okay? So you can easily just flip that triangle upside down where now you have here at L4, L5 is the point of the triangle, right? It's facing up now. And then you put the tan, I'm sorry, the white ice wave on the right side and the tan ice wave on the left side. So you'll be down here lower than the juncture where the injury is with the base of the triangle and it will be pointing up, right? And schools of thought, you can have it higher than the point or you can have it right on the point. Okay, glutathione and eon is great for inflammatory issues. So that's normally what's creating the problem throughout the day is this inflammatory issue. It typically gets worse as the day goes on, unless it's positional, right? If it's positional and this vertebrae is laying on that nerve, the ice wave will help, but it probably will not completely alleviate the issue. So you want to make sure that you have these in combination. Uh, the pain element, right, moving the flow of chi energy with the patches, and then you want to have your anti-inflammatory components. So those are key, right? Then we talked about the long-term or secondary component is your X39 and your X49, all right? So again, those are going to recruit stem cells into the particular area to help rebuild, rebuild and repair soft tissue. All right, so not visualize here are all the small tendons and ligaments that help this structure to stay in place, right? So those get damaged or um, impacted by whatever trauma or wear and tear issues over time. That's how these begin to get damaged. So between these various different transverse processes, between the spinous processes, you have different soft tissue that keeps all of this in place. If that gets damaged, that's one of the easiest ways to start to have those problems that we've been discussing. So it's important to have those be uh, rebuilt and repaired and strengthened. That's what X39 is going to do. That's what X49 is going to do. Right. Both of them are clinically proven to improve gene expression and specifically increase GHK and AHK copper peptide. Those copper peptides are great for coming in and making this tissue, this bone more youthful and more dense. All right. So that's a really powerful way long term. So within six months, eight months, you can imagine what type of increase in bone health and soft tissue health is going to happen with the consistent utilization of those two patches. But in the interim, you have to have some day-to-day -day support. And that's where we use the glutathione, eon, and ice wave or glutathione, eon, and energy enhancer. I mean, there's a lot of different strategies to begin to work on this area of the body. And we can get even more complex. Maybe even next month, we'll go a little bit deeper into how you patch for some of these issues because they can be challenging, you know, uh, finding the right orientation for that person. And so that's why I encourage you to talk to them and make sure they understand exactly where the area of, of pain is happening, where the area of damage is happening, because Sometimes the pain can feel like it's somewhere else when the culprit is actually in the low back, right? I hope that makes sense. And I hope that was edifying and you could increase your understanding of what's happening in the back with this visualization of this cool, uh, you know, lumbar skeletal uh, prop that I have here, all right? So, so much to unpack about life waves, so many things to discuss. Um, that's why we meet on a weekly basis to make sure that we answer all of your questions. So we're going to transition into the Q&A portion, all right? So you can raise your hand if you have a question. 
If you're on your phone, just tap your screen. That will pull up your icons and you'll see a smiley face with a plus sign. That is your reactions icon, all right? That basically gives you access to your emojis and you'll see one that allows you to raise your hand. Please do so. Uh, that allows me to manage the controls and answer questions and keep everyone in chronological order and all of that good stuff, all right? If you're on your laptop or you're on your desktop, you simply move your mouse or activate your screen, right? And then you'll see the same thing at the bottom towards the right-hand side. You'll see a smiley face with a plus sign. You click that reactions icon. And again, that will allow you to raise your hand if you know you have a question, all right? I don't see any hands at the moment. So if anyone is ready to have, okay, jumping right in, we've got an iPhone there. Please unmute yourself and ask your question. All righty. Now I have a daughter that has scoliosis. So okay. how so, is that? And I'm I'm glad that you okay. you asked that question because I forgot to do our disclaimer, our housekeeping. We can't use specific oh, yeah. names just because of the fact that we're recording this t this discussion and we don't want to give the wrong impression about what these patches are approved to do, okay? So they're a type one medical device, not a type two medical device, which means they don't heal, treat, cure, or prevent any particular medical condition in which scoliosis is. So we yeah. can't say that these have any particular improvement capability for scoliosis. What we can say is that they're supportive of the regenerative process, the bone remodeling process, bone physiology, and that with consistent use, you know, it's going to be supportive in other aspects of your treatment for your daughter's scoliosis. Mm -hmm. So um, it just depends. If somebody like your daughter is having pain, then we can use that same system that we talked about with ice wave, glutathione, and eon to support any aspect that is uncomfortable or just, you know, uh, painful, what have you. That's mm -hmm. first. Um, X39 and X49 are definitely capable of helping with the bone remodeling process, right? You know, every um, seven years, we are completely whole and new again, right? We have replenished all of our cells. We've totally um, gone out with the old and in with the new. So mm -hmm. um, having those patches available, obviously seven years is not what I'm suggesting it's going to take for there to be some sort of helpful benefits to wearing the patches. However, uh, we have to take into consideration that there's some time needed in order for these patches to be helpful and to work on the musculoskeletal system and to help rebuild and repair some of that soft tissue. Um, and that's what we would hope would be supportive in conditions mm -hmm. like that where you have a curvature of the spine. Yeah, she um, goes for pain shots, so to speak. And uh, I think this would probably just help her out because she's just a lot of pain now, you know, and she... She has she had it when she was young, and so it seemed like when she had a child, it just kind of made it a little worse on her as far as the pressure and all that. So she's kind of having some difficult time right now. Yeah, I totally understand. I've seen some cases, some you know, small and minute, some <laughs> really bad. And so when it's really bad, I know it can be debilitating and can really affect your quality of life. So. Um, I definitely think this would be a good strategy to help to support that. Um, if you have any more specific questions or you'd like me to meet with you all on a private Zoom meeting, I'd love to do that to discuss things in more detail. You can shoot okay. me an email or you can book a consultation on um, my website, which is www.askdrjeffmd.com. I'll put that in the chat. Okay. Um, and I'd welcome the opportunity to help you kind of figure out the best passion protocol to help her feel better. Okay, that'd be great. All right, you can see it right there in the chat. Okay, oh, All yeah, right. yeah. Yes, ma'am. Of you. course, of course. If I lower my hand. 
Okay, Bill, go right ahead, sir. It's your turn. I want one of those models for my desk. <laughs> I'm sure you could probably find one. There are, I can't even tell you where I found this one. I've had it for years and years and years. Um, but yeah, I'm sure Amazon has these or even the full skeleton. Maybe that would be my next uh, gift to myself is a full skeleton so we can use that during anatomy and, and acupuncture days. Yes, we should take up a collection for you to get one. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. And give it a name. Yeah, that would be cool, right? Okay. Um, so, MLB, did you have a question? Hello. Hi there. How are you? Hi. I'm wonderful. Thank the Lord. I'm very much interested in the patch. Okay. I have, as a matter of fact, I was just diagnosed with fourth stage bladder cancer. Okay. And I am, how can I put it? I prefer the naturopathic way of addressing my health. And stem cell has been an interest of mine for a long time. So I'm wondering if this project or this product and can in any way, fortunately, I don't have any pain, but could it regenerate my soft tissues? Yes, ma'am. That is what it is designed to do and clinically proven to do is to help rebuild and repair and regenerate soft tissue and other areas that have been damaged or impacted in some way. So I, I do think I, I'm a little biased, so I'll be honest, but I do think that this would be helpful for you. And I think it'd be helpful for anyone. Um, I, I have yet to bump into someone who really jumped into this, you know, head first and did not see some value and some benefit to it. Okay. So, um, again, this works at a cellular level. Right. And when your cells have a, an abnormal, uh, say have some DNA damage or, or they're abnormal in some sort of way and they're reproducing to create a tumor, um, this can be a supportive therapy for that. You know, I, obviously, at this stage, you want to throw the kitchen sink at it to to make sure that you can continue to have a quality of life. So I think this definitely should be one of the products that you add to your existing regimen and, you know, talk to your oncologist about it and all of that good stuff, just so that he or she is aware of what your game plan is and all of that good stuff. I'm not sure exactly where you are in your journey. Yeah, I have not yet seen the oncologist, no. Not okay. just which one is the cancer doctor? That's correct, the oncologist. Okay. I've seen the urologist. The urologist. Okay. So designation there, urologist is, we, we call them the plumbers, right? They're all about our pipes. So kidneys, our ureters, bladder, et cetera, mm -hmm. um, all of that health. And so any issue in those areas, they're very uh astute at how to help you with those conditions as well so um i'd be more than happy to talk to you in more detail about um what options there are for you and maybe to help you to make an informed decision if you're interested i would very much like to talk when how do i go about an appointment um so Let's just have, you can shoot me an email. Um, I'll put my email here in the chat okay. just to make it more simplified for you. Is this your first time joining us today? No, as a matter of fact, the very last two weeks ago was okay. my very first attempt at listening. And that's when I was going through um, serious infection to where I was out of my head 
And I right. ended up catching only a, a little bit before I was out for seven days. Oh, no. Well, I'm glad you're back. Oh, and yeah, I'm glad to be back. Yeah. Absolutely. And, so you know, it's, it's a journey. You know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So yeah. take that into consideration. Try to stay as positive and optimistic as possible. That's one of the key components and key elements to yeah. uh, maintaining your health in these circumstances. So look forward to our discussion. Please shoot me an email and we can coordinate schedules and talk in more detail. Okay. All right. And my Thanks name so much. is Marjorie. Okay, Marjorie, it's a pleasure. All right. Bye-bye. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right. We got a, an iPhone. Don't have a name for you, but you have the floor. You can ask another question. I think you put your hand no. up again. No. Um, my name is Spencer. And hey, I, I went to the VA the other day and had a blood test and it came back. My white blood cell count was extremely low, which it has been for years. Now, with the 39 help with the with that uh, situation. Yes. So there there has been a lot of examples of individuals who have had some sort of issue, whether it's low red blood cells or low immune cells or certain uh, cells that are not being properly produced. And so mm -hmm. again, it's a it's a stimulator, right? X39 is all about boosting you up. So if there's something deficient, usually it does a good job of helping it to come back into balance. But, you know, we would probably have to talk in a little bit more detail for me to properly understand the full scope. Okay. Okay. Appreciate it. Yeah. But I definitely think it's you know, well, I'm, I'm better than, than not, right? I, I would definitely <laughs> encourage you to begin to wear the technology if you haven't already started so, and then I'm just sorry. track things. Right. I have, I started the 39 uh, about three days ago. So. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you're, you're brand spanking new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, you know, Thank so you. If, you, if you had your lab test, I don't know when the last time you've had your lab test, but I would say, you know, maybe within the next six to eight weeks, you know, uh -huh. go ahead and get another exam or another lab test and just make mm -hmm. a comparative analysis and look at where your cells are then to where your cells are at that point. Um, and just take into consideration, you know, when you have your labs done, that is a snapshot in time, right? So, I mean, there's a lot of different things that can impact how those different cells are produced and how, uh, what volume they're produced in uh, to deal with different stuff. So if you've had an infection or if you've had a particular stressor or uh, some other issue that can throw off your, your balance very okay. easily, very easily. So, um, that's why I say maybe we need to have a little bit more in-depth conversation because it could be something that's uh, indicative of a chronic issue versus something that's more acute that has thrown things off. And, you know, the X39 would be valuable in both of those scenarios, but I think it's something that um, if it's more of an acute issue, that could theoretically improve faster than if it's more of a chronic issue or something that uh, is is uh, associated with something separate than an infection or some, um, you know, acute situation that's going on. So uh, again, yeah. sh shoot me, shoot me an email or, or give me a little bit more detail and uh, we can have a little bit more in-depth. Uh, Dr. Dr. Jeff, let me interject this. Um, I don't get sick. I mean, they were worried because it was a low, but I went to an old oncologist uh, because they were sending me all over the place wondering what to do. And what he said uh, made pretty good sense. He said that I have white blood cells, but they come out to fight when I get an infection or if I'm sick. So when I got sick, I had a, a, a when I got had pneumonia, I went in, they test my blood and it was up five, five or six, it was up pretty high. I don't know whether that indicated anything or not, but he said that they come out of hiding and they fight. 
So I don't know. Well, that's exactly what the immune system does, right? right. It, it is our military defense. So we've got Coast Guard, we got Marines, we got Army, we've got Navy, we've got Air Force. They all have their own respective jobs, right? And mm -hmm. sometimes what happens is in a crisis, when you're having a battle in one part of your body, then it sends Army Rangers or it sends Navy SEALs or whatever in those particular instances, which means that other cells are not going to be as prevalent, right? Because the the emphasis is on this fight, not on protecting our borders or whatever mm -hmm. circumstance may be going on. So even if you're not sick, right? If, and even if you're not actively having symptoms, there could always be something that kind of preoccupies the immune system to do something different. And that would be reflective in your lab. So if you get a lab in that particular circumstance and you don't look at it with the entire picture, then that could create, um, you know, some misunderstanding about why the cells are doing what they're doing. Okay. I appreciate it, doctor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. And Pat, I saw that you sent a message in the chat. Can you, I didn't have a chance to read it all. Can you share it with me, please? Thank you. Hi, Dr. Jeff. Thank Hi, how you are so you? much. I'm good. Well, I was just letting you know that I was Marjorie's cousin, and we were okay. invited by Cynthia Brain. Got it. Uh, to uh, come on, and you know we have we are very we're very interested <laughs> in the uh, patches. Um, I have a couple of issues. I've been um dealing for for years with um uh I have um back you know back spasms is what my issue is. Okay. And um, right, okay. this discussion was pretty good for you, huh? Yes, yes, that, that was right on time for me. So, um, like I said, I'll be in touch, and you know, we'll be in touch, uh, uh with you to talk um offline a little bit more about the patches, okay. and uh, Perfect. we appreciate what you're doing. I look forward to it, and thank you so much. I look forward to hearing from you and helping to figure out what best we can do with all the technology and stuff we have at our disposal. Thank you so much. All right, ma'am. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't see any other hands. Do we have any other questions, comments, or statements before we close for the evening? All right. Wonderful. Thank you so much, as always, for joining Ask Dr. Jeff. It, it does not work without you guys being here. So I'm always so uh, appreciative of your support and your participation. Um, Want to make sure that I highlight the importance of checking out the YouTube channel, guys. There is a huge amount of information available to you in the archive on my YouTube channel. You just go to YouTube, you type in at ask dr jeff md and that will take you to my channel this is episode 156 if i'm not mistaken or 157 i lose count uh, and but you can go back and scroll through all of those old videos um, you can even go to the top of my channel and you can type in some keyword that you're looking for so like in for example with patch you can say back and all the videos about back will pull up. You know, somebody might say um, autoimmune or, uh, you know, issues with sinuses or whatever the case may be. And you'll be able to see the videos that are already there and uploaded onto the channel that have those uh, keywords in the title. So I usually try to specify uh, specifically in the title uh, what the general consensus is about the conversation that way you can find it appropriately but each session is going to end with q a and you never know what questions people are going to ask so there's hidden gems in every video that i think would be very valuable for you to take a listen to so 
if you're walking your dog, you're working out, you're hanging out, whatever the case may be, you have some free time or you want some background music, put on one of the videos because there's all kind of cool things that you can learn uh, based upon the questions and how I answer them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Also, I mentioned earlier, check out my website. It's www.askdrjeffmd.com. Um, you can join up to be a subscriber, which gets a lot of cool perks. You can see that on the site. You can ask questions if it's something burning that you need to get a question to answer. And it's not Tuesday. You just missed Tuesday or it's private and you don't want to discuss it online, in person, et cetera. Totally understand. You can send me a message there. And also take into consideration, guys, that we're here every Tuesday night. Barring emergency, you'll see me here 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. You can always reach the channel or reach the the uh, meeting through AskDrJeff.org. All right. So you just type that into your browser and that takes you directly to the meeting um, here on Zoom. All right. So I will see you same time, same channel next Tuesday. Look forward to the discussion. Thank you so much for all of your questions and support along the way. We'll see you soon. Thank you again. Thank yeah. you. Good night. Thanks, Bill. Right, yeah, Take it easy.